Dustin Wankoff here, Product Specialist with Agland and Lloydminster. Today we're going to do our product support video for our model year 2020-1910 air cart. So next what we're going to do is we're going to go through our air cart navigation. Anything with an up arrow is an advanced setup. Under our meter setup in here, this is where we can select which tank, our product, and our color of roller. Our calibration. And variable rate if we have it enabled. One thing to note, if variable rate is enabled, you must have a checkbox in which of the following you'd like to use. If you are loading a prescription, you will then have it checked off for which tank you want that prescription loaded. Under our air cart setup, the size of our air tank, our remote height sensor or switch, variable rate on or off, tow between, dual fans and section equalizer. Under our tool, here we will have our tool type, that is a dual chute, our row spacing, and how many feet. Do note that if you are a 57 foot tool, you will add 57 here and 10 on, tau on T6 and B6. Under our sensor, we have our tire speed. This is very important to make sure that our air cart matches our tractor GPS speed. If our air cart speed and tractor GPS speed don't match up, that is where we will have inaccurate rates. If your air cart is going slower or faster than the tractor GPS, we can just go larger or smaller with this number. Next is our height switch, and here we can have it set up as a common or separate height switch. Once we get it set to the height that we want it to turn on and off, we will hit this rotational arrow and it will save that height. Our tank pressurization gauges here, it is a good idea to make sure that we calibrate zero regularly. When we do this, we need to make sure that our fans are off. Under our totals, one, two, three, this is where we have our field totals, our air cart totals, our lifetime acres and lifetime hours. And here, this is maybe a good option for you to have your field totals and your yearly totals here. You can be toggled on and off by selecting this and zeroing out by pressing, pressing the zero. It's also good to note that your acres in here are not the same as your section command acres. As the meter is turning, it is calculating the full width of that meter while we're seating. Meter totals. Under our calc, we can see here our flow, so our two tanks going to the bottom and our rear tank going to the top. How many acres till we run empty if they're right full? An area test and our, of course our meter verification. In our diagnostic settings, we hit system tests. Here we can make sure that our tank pressurization gauges are reading properly. We can test our top lamp and our bottom tank lamps. We can do our hydraulic maintenance in here. Section command diagnostics. We can hit all on. They'll all come back green if they command and then go all off. And last in here we can check our voltage to our air cart. If ever we have uh, middle tank EPM low voltage, that means that your seven pin light connector isn't connected or that you've blown a work light fuse and this middle tank will be lit up red with no voltage. Next what we're going to do is go through our equipment profiles. On the Gen 4 we'll go main menu, applications, Equipment Manager. Here we can select our tractor, make sure the proper GPS offsets are entered, 
and the rear hitch. Next we will go into our air seater and air cart. And here we know that we have a tow between air cart, drawbar connection. Here we can see our center of rotation will be measured from the center of our front hitch to our rear wheels and our rear connection will be from the center of the front hitch to the rear hitch. We recommend that you each measure your own cart specifically. Our tool 56 feet 12 inch spacing. Center of rotation will be from the center of the hitch pin of the tool to wherever the tool rotates. An 1870 will be to the center mainframe wheels, an 1830, 35, 1890, and 1895 will be to your rear wheels. Moving down, our work points will be from the center of your hitch pin of your tool to your first working rank. 1870s, 1830s, and 1890s will be to your front rank. rank. 1895s and 1835s, you will have individual measurements for your fertilizer runs and your seed runs. Moving down are mechanical delays for our section command on and off times. Okay, next we're going to set up our documentation. On the Gen 4, we will go to setup in the bottom left hand corner, select location. And in here we can enter our client farm and field. If you don't see it listed, you can add new, enter the name, and proceed. You as well can send a setup file from your My John Deere Operation Center account. Under our work summary, this is where we will set up our documentation. Operation, either product application or planting and seeding will come from the air cart controller depending which is selected. Here you can select your product name, and if you don't see it in the list, you can add new product. Same for your seed. If you have two tanks applying the same product, to keep your documentation and mapping working accordingly, go to Equipment, Air Seeder and Cart, and go to tank configuration, and here you can select individual, alternate, or merge. Alternating is if you want to run one tank empty and then switch to the other, merge is applying the same product from multiple tanks at once. Select which one applies to you. Here, with our tanks, with our configuration under merge, you can see how our documentation now looks. Here is our relative flow blockage home run page. Here, we can see each of our towers, top chute and bottom chute, select them, and then see the secondary towers within. While we are seeding, we will see them lit up to the corresponding colors here for what is being seen. As we're seeding, we will see the bars change here as the flow across that tower changes and the black bar around each tower change in relationship to its neighbors. In our advanced settings, here we can change our sensitivity for our top shoot and bottom shoot. For example, for canola, we may want to change our sensitivity. Under advanced settings, here is where our meter on and meter off delay can be set. When a section is commanded off or a meter is turned off, this is the amount of seconds before blockage will start looking for a block. If you have any sensors that are giving you an issue and you wish to mute them, touch them and they will then go to a checkerboard pattern. To turn them back on, touch them again. Next we're going to talk about setting up our section command. For those of you that haven't done it before, this is a multi-step process. First what we're going to do is set our fans to our desired speed that we'll be running in the field. Next, in our display, we're going to make sure that we have one tank enabled, that our half width disconnects are open and our other ones are shut. We'll grab a stopwatch and this works best if you have two people. With everything running, you can grab a stopwatch 
hit start at the same time you hit your hydraulic calibration switch and time how long it takes your product to get to your furthest outside runs. Then, once you have that time determined, you can reset the stopwatch, let go of the switch, and see how long it takes for you to run out of product to your shortest runs, which will be in your center. These are now your mechanical on and off times. It's best to do these three or four times and build an average as tenths of seconds do make a large difference. Now that we have our on and off times, we need to enter them into the display. Go to setup in the bottom left hand corner, equipment, air seater and cart, and scroll down to mechanical delay. And here we can enter our on and off times that we already set with our stopwatch. You can enter them for each tank. Now that we have our basic mechanical on and off times entered in our display, we want to perform a scratch test. First, in our overlap settings, we want to make sure that everything is set to 100% overlap. Then we will perform our scratch test. We want to drive down the field with the GPS line with our tool on the ground and make sure that we've painted a coverage map. Then we can lift up and we're going to want to cross our scratch pad test with our tool just out of the ground, but make sure we are applying product so we can see it above. As we are crossing our scratch pad, we're going to notice chevron patterns of our seed fertilizer turning on and off. This is due to our center section shutting off first and our outer wings getting product last. As we're performing this test, we want to do it multiple times to make sure we're getting adequate coverage. If we notice on our turn off, if we have a miss in our center, we need to decrease our turn off time. As well, on this side, if we notice that we have misses on both sides of our wings, we're going to need to increase our turn on time. Now, while traveling this way as well, if we notice that we have a large overlap area here, we're going to want to increase our off time to bring our pattern out. And going this way as well, if we notice if there's a bunch of extra covered area here, we're going to want to decrease our turn on time to push our pattern further out. The whole goal while we're setting mechanical on and off times is to make sure that our turn off time is right at the line in our center sections and our turn on time is right at the line with our turn on time on our outer wings. Once we have that set, we can then use our overlap settings to get the desired overlap coverage we're looking for. Okay, now that we have our mechanical turn on and turn off times, we can set our overlap control. As we add feet of overlap, it is going to add extra coverage for us. On our turn off, by adding feet, we will see our cells move in, and our turn on time, we will see us move out here. Once we are satisfied and have verified our times are correct, we can come into our menu, applications, section control, and in here we can set our overlap settings for each tank. Your coverage of overlap, 100% overlap plus additional, you can enter how many feet of overlap you want. As well, you can do exterior and interior boundaries if you are using them. 